Hello, welcome back, Fred in the Shed. And as promised, this is the second video where we're gonna be using the Nano VNA, little uh, testing meter there. And we're gonna be testing in a moment these Nagola imitation fake NA771 antennas. But before I get on to that, I'd just like to say thanks for people that left comments on the first video, really, really appreciate that. Obviously, I've never had one of these little analyzers before, so I really do appreciate the helpful comments that I got on the previous video. So I just wanna quickly run through just a few pointers that came up, because I'm learning as I'm going along. Um, so people have said that when I'm when using the meter to test the antenna, is is because the antenna was quite close to the meter, is my body and the camera and everything else, is that gonna affect the SWR that I was getting on the meter? And yeah, it possibly it possibly quite quite did. So what I did is I did order in a an extendable lead. I was going to use an extendable it came through, unfortunately it's got the wrong connections on the end. It's one of those things on eBay where you order last thing at night and you don't look at the picture very, very well. So that I can't use that lead but then i got to thinking um as with cb radio if you do a massive sort of long lead extended patch lead is that going to affect the swr as well if it's not completely straight if it gets coiled the actual length the, the wave ratio of the length of cable so i thought that might be getting myself too complicated that's probably going to be more trouble than it's worth so what i'm doing for this test i'm going to use the leads that came with the little vna here but i'm using the extension piece in the middle and um, so we're going to have twice the length of lead i'm hoping by keeping the antenna away from the camera and myself that will give us probably a better result that that's what i'm hoping another thing someone else mentioned in the comments that when i do the calibrating i should have calibrated the meter with the extension lead attached and of course that makes sense yeah i messed up there so that's what i'll be doing i will be calibrating the meter i'll do that off screen because you've seen all that before but i'll be using these three little caps and i'll be doing it with the lead attached. Also, they, someone else mentioned as well that you should tighten up the lead and also the calibration caps with a little spanner because the, if they're not talked up properly, that can also give you a false reading. So yeah, thanks for that. Cheers, whoever left that comment. Got myself a little spanner there. And then finally, when, we, when I did the SWR testing, um, yeah, people said, would the antenna be different if, for example, it was attached to the radio? So when you're holding when you're holding the radio and you're holding it at close proximity to your body, because it's close to you, is that going to lower the SWR? Is it going to use your own body as ground wave? And yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think of that either. And you're probably quite right, actually, when you think about it. You're going to be holding this two inches probably from your head. All of your body might give it a, some sort of ground wave and it might lower the SWR. I, I don't know how I could possibly test that with this little meter. I don't think that's sort of possible. So for this one, we are going to be just going with the same uh, procedure as before. Just have the, have the antenna isolated and sort of sort of go with that but like i say I'm, it's completely new to me all of this and thank you ever so much for the really really helpful comments um again yeah, once again if i'm you know if i'm doing something you can see i'm doing something wrong please leave constructive constructive comments in the comments and uh, yeah that will help me along for future videos but anyway let's get on with this uh, this this video this this chest these nagola fake nagola na771 antennas so I checked, it's been two years ago since I made a video using the Bofang treble eight there and these extendable, extended length 771 antennas. Very, very controversial, these antennas. Um, I felt at the time that it, it did slightly, it did slightly improve the performance of the 888 radio. Um, whether it was enough to justify keeping this permanently attached to the radio, I'm not sure. To be honest, I'll be totally honest with you, I've gone back to using just the standard Bofung antenna purely because it's just more convenient. If you walk around with this on your radio, certainly outside, you, you do become quite obvious, I find this. And uh, yeah, I, I, th I think in my results, I, th I think the sort of improvement in performance was marginal. Now these, rad these antennas are very controversial. These are fake, they're all over eBay. Um, it was used to be very easy 
to sort out the original Nagola 771s and the fake ones. The, the first thing was the price. The original on these antennas, I believe about 15 to 17 pounds typically, and the cheap ones were extremely cheap, which they still are, two to three pounds delivered. The packaging, the originals, I believe, had a sort of yellowy green sort of PVC sleeve packaging, and the fakes were orange. If I've got that wrong, please let me know in the comments. Um, but like everything else that's made in China, the, the, the game's changed and, and these fake antennas now look and feel just the same as the original one and a lot of these are being sold as branded original antennas. So it's so difficult now when you go say onto eBay or on Amazon, it's pretty much impossible to guarantee that you're getting a genuine antenna if, if that's what you want. So you were gonna have to go to a proper radio supply shop and uh, they should hopefully and I'm sure they will be shipping you a genuine antenna now a lot, lot of controversy is well why do I need to bother with a, an antenna that's say 15 17 pounds if I can pick one up two pounds 50 surely it's just a coiled piece of sort of wire inside a PVC sleeve well what difference does it make um, yeah, again, from what I've read, um, some people it's, it's hit or miss. Some people have got original Nagola antennas. They have bought these cheap imitation ones. They've tested them for performance and they've found very, very little difference. They seem to perform the same. Other people have not been so lucky. They've bought these cheap antennas and they've put them on the radio and they've been a direct short. There's obviously been some kind of short in the most likely the bottom part of this antenna here and it can cause problems and it can damage the radio. You've got to think the, the cheap ones are so cheap that they're going to be produced, mass produced uh, in China in one of these sort of large factories. There's, there's no great kind of skill going into the uh, sort of construction of these. So you've got to pay your money, take your choice. Now, honest, my, my opinion, because I know people are going to ask me, if I'm going to use a Yaesu little sort of 20 or 2 meter, 70 centimeter radio or something like the Alinko, you know, a radio that's going to cost me over 100 pounds. Am I going to put a cheap fake antenna on it? No, I'm not. I'm going to stick to the original antenna. I'm not going to risk shorting out my radio and uh, killing the finals in my radio. On the other hand, if I'm playing about with a, with a UV5R and a AAA, a 10 pounds and a 20 pound radio, then Personally, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to try these sort of antennas, and uh, yeah, I do risk damaging my radios, but they're pretty cheap anyway. I don't really want to damage them, but obviously they're cheap. So that, that's that's my take on the whole thing. I, if you if you're into pro, you know proper radio and you've got a decent radio, then I would steer steer clear of these sort of fake antennas. No one really knows. Okay, no one. I've looked on the internet, and no one really knows whether they're getting the real deal or they're buying fake. In fact, it's got to the stage now where people are sort of saying they're not even gonna try and buy a genuine Nagola antenna because they're so scared they're gonna get a fake that's gonna damage the radio. In this video, we're just gonna be testing these two antennas on the nanometer there, mainly for the SWR, just to sort of see. I mean, straight away, out of the packet, you can see they're different lengths. One's already about half, half a, or just maybe a centimeter longer. So straight away that they're different lengths, which isn't particularly uh, great. I've got about six of these in total. I've got them up in the loft somewhere. They're, as I say, they're all fake. I haven't been able to buy a genuine one. Right, so here's the setup. Um, it's a hopefully a little bit better than before. I've got the antenna twice the distance away from the meter. So I'm not gonna be anywhere near it. If I do put my hand towards it, it does very slightly change the SWR. So I've got the SWR on the screen. I've set the scale slightly smaller, as someone suggested. Thank you for that comment. So we're now going between four and 700 megahertz. So that's hopefully gonna make it a little bit more accurate. So let's zoom in on the scale and let's see what uh, SWR this antenna peaks at. Right, hopefully that's clear on the screen. I've gone to manual focus now. First thing I've noticed which I think people have commented on, you've got to be really careful, this meter is very sensitive. The moment I put my hand anywhere near the meter, it completely changes the results. So you have to really do step back and sort of don't, don't touch the meter. But as you can see on the screen, we've got two little troughs there. And obviously the lower the trough, then the lower the SWR. So on the first trough there, that's uh, 427 megs, which is 
getting close to the 446 frequency that I would want to use this antenna on. But the SWR, even though that's at a low point, 5.7, 5.3 is jumping about a bit if I move it back. Settling, yeah, 5.4. That, that's, you know, that's really not good. That is dangerously high for this antenna. And the lower peak there, if we go on to that, which I'm going to go in, that's going to be way outside the sort of 446 band. Um, that's going to be probably getting on for 500 megs, something like that. So I'm just going to zoom on to the, that second peak there. So this will go a bit crazy when I touch the, touch the meter. Right, back off a little bit. Yeah, that, that's resonating, that's um, 535 megahertz. And that's an SWR, that's still just under three. So that's not very good at all. That, that, that's, yeah, that is quite dangerously okay, high. Swap over to the other fake antenna now. We just, this other one was, I think, very, very slightly shorter. And uh, we'll just sort of see what that brings in. Okay, here we go. I, I've put on the second antenna, it's actually longer. It's, it's a longer antenna than the first one, and this one is really bad. You can see the two sort of dips here, if, if I just go down to this one. So it's lowest SWR is round about 5.2. Take my hands away, because my capacitance of my hands is affecting the meter, but well, 5.3, and that is at uh, 418 megs. And now if I if I, if I take this up to the 446 band, which is where I was hoping to use it, here you go, 445, take my hands away, that's off the scale. So at 446 band, where I tune that Bofang radio, we're talking an SWR of about 8.5, 8.7. 8.8, that is dangerously high. So yeah, do I want to put that antenna on my radio? Absolutely not. Would I dream about putting it on a Yaesu or a Linko radio? No, absolutely not as well. So I'm really shocked by that, assuming this meter's working okay, and I've got no reason to doubt it. And if I just go along to the bottom peak, so this, this the lowest SWR on this antenna is really at about 514 megahertz and that's still 5.5 5.4 so it's all over the place really it absolutely is yeah it's all it's dangerously high it's all over the place but SWR of eight this 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 antenna will not be going back on any of my radios even a little 10 pound tre treble eight not going to put it back on at all um, and there you go. I mean, I'm pretty shocked by that. I don't know why I should really be shocked. If you think about something that costs two pounds delivered from China, how you expect it to be a finely tuned antenna just because it resembles the, uh, another antenna. I'm, I don't know really why I'm that shocked, but yeah. Now, how accurate this is, I, I, I can't say. As I say, this is all new to me. I've followed the instructions. I think I've done everything reasonably correct according to what I've seen other videos. Um, how accurate this little nanometer is. I know there's uh, people have said that the accuracy of this has been brought into question. I honestly don't know. It's just me sort of mucking about if you like. But personally, after seeing those results, I will not be putting this back on any of my radios. I will be sticking with the stock antenna. I might just do an FM test, uh, just to sort of try that out, see, what, see if that works. And also, I did say I was going to do a test of this telescopic antenna, didn't I? Which I probably will do. I will do that at a later date, because this one you can tune the length. And I think it'd be interesting to tune this one right down to 446. But again, this, um, this was a bit more expensive. This was, this was getting on for about 20 pounds when I bought it. So, but again, you know, the SWI, is, is this gonna come up with a high SWI? Is that safe to use? Um, but yeah, my conclusions completely changed from my first video. My conclusions are, to be honest, don't chance these fake antennas. If, you know, you might get a good one, but an SWR of five or six or even eight, um, yeah, that's, that's gonna heat your radio up. That's gonna damage the final. So I, I just wouldn't really take the chance. I think I will be sticking to regular antennas for now. So there you go. As I say, thanks for tuning in. Uh, look out for these other couple of videos coming up in the future. I hope everybody is safe. We're still in lockdown here in the UK and I imagine all you, all you lot are. So please stay at home, stay safe. Let's get through this together. But as always, 
Cheers, thank you for your view time. It's always most welcome. If you found it interesting, give me the thumbs up and then I can sort of see that you've enjoyed the video and that helps me and that helps the channel. But as for now, as always, stay safe, take care. I'll catch you all on the next one. Catch you later. Oh, my God.